Alright guys, if you know me well, you know that I haven't been productive for the past few weeks. And now it's finally time for me to record my own voice again for a brand new video. And in today's video, it's going to be a portfolio video. We're going to be talking about ArtStation specifically. And in this video, I'll be talking about why you should be using ArtStation, how to set up an account, how to use the platform, how to upload your works, how to categorize your stuff, and lastly, how to make your portfolio look legit. Alright, so let's get on to it. Alright, so to start off, why you should be using ArtStation and not any other platforms like DeviantArt or just stick with Instagram. Why ArtStation? If you have ever looked at ArtStation's meme page before, you'll start to realize how shit your own drawings are. Just by looking at some of these artworks on ArtStation's main page. And the good thing about this is that when you are on ArtStation and when you are using it, you will generally feel like you are part of it and it makes you want to improve to become like this pros that you see on the main page. And that's also a misconception where people believe really? that ArtStation is for digital artists. I mean, if you use the filters, you can just look at them yourselves. Nope. Now, don't get me wrong here, right? I'm not saying that you should delete your Instagram account or DeviantArt account just to jump over to ArtStation. I personally use all of them, but I have actually stopped posting on DeviantArt. I'm not sure if I'll get back into DeviantArt in the future. Maybe I will, I don't know. The point I'm trying to make here is that if you want a professional portfolio platform, ArtStation is the one that you're looking for. Alright, now that we got that out of the way, explaining why you should be sticking with ArtStation, the first thing to do now is setting up an account. Now note that when you set up, there are plenty of things that are pretty essential. And that includes professional headline. For this, put what you're doing currently. So if you're a freelance artist, interior designer, 3D modeler, put those down. And if you're a student, uh, don't just put in student. Instead, try student artist, student illustrator, stuff like that. Try to be a little bit more specific with your professional headline. And up next, you have the summary to showcase some of your strengths and experiences that you have with what you do and your socials to link you to your other platforms such as Instagram, YouTube, Twitch, even Steam, Damn, in fact. Son. I don't know why Ancestion wants to put it. Also, hiring info. You can choose between full-time employment, contract, or freelance. And next you have the skills, fashion design, logo design, graphic design, whatever things that are design related, you can just throw it in. Just make sure that it doesn't look too messy. And next you can choose to put in softwares that you know how to use, Productions tab to showcase the stuff that you have worked on before and lastly professional experiences for you to flex your work experience basically And you can always change all of this afterwards So if you are kind of puzzled during this phase, you don't have to worry about it And all of those that we have just mentioned will end up being on the about tab in your profile And the about tab is just as important as your artworks because if a person stumble across your works and then eventually goes to your account they will most likely want to get to know you better, see what you do, and check out your other social media as well. And if you've got everything set up on your About tab very nicely, this will make life way easier for your fans, future employers, or even future work partners, and you do not want to lose this great opportunity. And now, how to use the platform. Once you land on the default page, you'll see a lot of artworks by various artists. There are filters that you can use and also channels that you can follow for specific artworks that you'd like to see. So all of these are actually pretty self-explanatory. You can even see blogs and job offers at the top. League of Legends, Superheroes, ooh, Destiny. Now for this bar that you see on the top right, the first one is for uploading your works, followed by notifications and messages over here. To message someone, simply go to their profile and click message. And these two are actually just for shopping on that station. One's the wishlist, the other's a uh, shopping cart. Now if we move on to the profile, your profile will have these tabs. Portfolio will be your, uh, you know, portfolio. About tab, we have all of the things that we've just mentioned just now. Your summary, other social media platforms, hiring info, skills and softwares, productions and weird experiences that you have. Likes shows the post that you have liked. So if you ever see something that you like, instead of bootmarking, you can actually just like the artwork and you can look back at it next time through this tab. Following and followers, wait, you guys already know what this is, right? And lastly, we have challenges. So if you have ever successfully completed an ArtStation challenge submission, they will all be over at this tab. You will also see stores and prints if you do ever sell your works on ArtStation. Now moving on to uploading your works, make sure that the works that you post showcases your skill set and the strengths as an individual artist. 
And usually when it comes to this, people just downgrade themselves, which is not something that you want to do. You want people to have a good impression of you, you want them to know that you are a motivated individual who is passionate about your works and want to share them to the world. And your artworks have to show it. Talking about uploading your works, I also get this question asked a lot. What should I post? And it's one of those questions that is just so difficult for me to answer because everybody's art is just so different and you yourself is the perfect person that you should ask this question to. But through my experience, I would suggest to post the artworks that truly represents you and that you're passionate about sharing them to the world. And now for categorizing your stuff, making things look tidy and neat. Alright, so whenever you post a new artwork, they'll appear as the first artwork on your portfolio, but you can actually also drag them wherever you want afterwards. There are two folder display options. Personally, I prefer the one that's on default just because it looks a lot less confusing and a lot more attractive at first glance. You guys can experiment with how you place certain artworks. Some people like to put similar artworks beside each other based on theme, color or style. So yeah, you'll definitely be adding in a new piece every now and then so feel free to change and improve your portfolio whenever you think that something needs to be changed. And that brings us to our next point. How do you make a portfolio look good? And the first thing that you need to do is to make sure that the about tab have enough information to tell people that you're an amazing artist. Make sure that the thumbnails of the artworks all look very good and high quality. And it's not just that. A fitting profile picture and a background would also make your portfolio look more unique, more professional and stand out more compared to the rest of the people with just an average portfolio. And showing that you care for your own portfolio is very important as well. That means making changes to your own portfolio whenever you can and making it look better and better. It's like decorating your own sweet home. If you find something out of place, like your sofa for example, if you find your sofa out of place, you find it too big, that is taking up too much space, you want to think of ideas to change it. So if at any point of time your portfolio makes you feel just like that sofa, do not ignore it. And if you have remembered all of the things that we have covered throughout this video, you should be good to go. And while you are surfing on ArtStation, never get discouraged by your own or other people's work because this does not help to motivate you and as an artist, you want to feel motivated. I also want to say, be proud of your craft. I've come across many people who believe that doing realistic style will make them look more experienced or that if you join a particular style, you'll look way cooler than the others. Never try to create art pieces like that. You want to keep on drawing because you want to improve and grow as an artist and not to be a people pleaser. I was just like this back then and it had a really negative impact on me. It made me hate the drawing for a period of time and I could no longer find the joy from drawing since then. So yeah, don't let that happen to you guys. And if you've got a friend, someone who you know, who is also a professional artist working in the industry right now, definitely ask them for tips on improving your portfolio and artworks in general. And before I go, I just want to say Thank you very much to all the good friends, members of the community for contributing a series of artworks for this video. I think you guys who contributed know exactly what these are. So yeah, I've asked for the shittiest works that you guys can give and you guys absolutely nailed it. Thank you guys very much. And that's it for the video. Hit a like if you have found this video helpful for you guys who's currently building or thinking of building a portfolio. If you've got any questions for me, leave it down in the comments and subscribe if you have not. Even though our current subscriber count looks pretty nice, I'm hoping that we can reach 100 in the next couple of months to get this channel a custom URL. So yeah, thank you guys so much for the endless support across all of the platforms and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye bye.